Welcome back to the misadventures of furloughs. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. <sighs> Gonna be going on furlough, but it's not as bad as it sounds. Um, so I'm in construction. Uh, so we're considered an essential service, and we still have a lot of work to do. Uh, but in order to cut costs for this next year, they have determined that everybody in the company salary needs to take a mandatory one-week furlough between now and April 30th, basically our six-month fiscal mark. Um, so our quarter starts... Um, quarter one starts in November for us, so uh, November to, to April. So within six months, we've got to do a uh, one-week furlough, which honestly isn't that bad. Um, still get all my vacation time, just don't get paid for the furlough. Um, so that brings me to the reason for this video. I'm sure there are a number of you out there that have had to deal with something similar to this, where uh, you've either lost your job or uh, been furloughed or laid off um, or been injured and couldn't work. So what are you doing about it? What are you doing to make sure that if and when it happens, and I say and when because one thing that's pretty much guaranteed for everybody is you're going to have more than one job in your life. So you're going to wind up being in that position at some point in your life to where you're not making any money, where you're not having a steady nine to five income. Um, and are you prepared for that? A lot of people in this country, in this day and age, are not. Um, they're literally living paycheck to paycheck. And that's a scary thing. If you lose your job to all of a sudden not have a paycheck and not be able to make your bills. I'm fortunate. Um, I make pretty good money in my job. And uh, we spend a lot of money, but a lot of that's discretionary. You know, it's not money that we absolutely have to spend. Um, and I've got an investment that uh, generates a return. And I also do work on the side. So I've got a couple different streams of revenue. My wife does not work. So, you know, it's just me bringing in the money. I say she doesn't work. Let me rephrase that. She doesn't get paid a salary or an hourly wage from a company. I pay her for cleaning of the Airbnb. So she does make money, she does work. She's a very hard worker. Um, we've got four kids, four teenagers. There's a lot of stuff going on in this house all the time. So she's working, trust me, she's working. Uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a very challenging job for her. Quite frankly, I'm blessed to not have to do the work that she does. So we're fine, you know, getting furloughed, in my mind, sure, I'm not going to get paid for it, but you know what? That's a week I get to spend with my kids, and I still have all my vacation time for next year, and I'm rolling a week over from this year, so I'm actually technically going to have like six weeks of vacation next year, and I'm only, gonna get, and I'm, I'm only not going to get paid for one of them, so that's pretty cool. You know, a lot of people in the construction in industry, if they're, um, you know, if, if they're an hourly employee, let's say they're a, a carpenter and they're working on a job and that job finishes up and there's no job for them to go to, well, guess what? They get laid off. Um, they may not have a job or an income for a couple days. So um, I guess what I'm saying is it's extremely important for you to do two things. Uh, the first one would be to save your money. I've done a lot of reading, a lot of study on this. 
Um, there's a lot of really good books out there um, that can teach you how to how to manage your finances and, and all that. But the first thing I would say is if you can figure out a way to cut your expenses and save some money, target saving 10%. Okay? 10% of your gross, not your take home, but your gross. Build up a rainy day fund so that if you do get furloughed or you do lose your job or something else happens disastrous that results in you not being able to, to generate an income, you'll have the money available to pay for those necessary bills, you know, keeping the power on, uh, keeping the roof over your head, food on the table, gas in the car, insurance on the car, all those bills that we have to pay. It's important to be able to do that. Quick aside, I am smoking my country gentleman and in it I have a light English blend that I made myself. It's my mixture 001. Um, I'll give you guys the recipe one of these days. I gotta find it. <laughs> so that aside. Um, so the first item, save your money, 10%. If you can't save 10%, save 5%. Save whatever you can. Forgo that morning Starbucks run. You know, that's five bucks right there. And that, that's actually uh, probably for a small coffee. Well, unless you're just getting like a regular coffee, that's still two or three bucks. So save your money because you just never know when you're going to lose your income. Secondly, if you have been saving and you've got a decent chunk of money set aside, what's that money doing for you? Is that money just sitting in a bank account generating like 0.05% interest every month? Or do you have it in like a, a CD or a money market fund that's going to make maybe 2%? By the way, inflation is at least 2%. Or are you making your money work for you? What I mean by that, is it generating any income for you? So I have my Airbnb. You can see the videos. Um, on my on my YouTube channel, just go ahead and, and click through and, and until you find it. Um, but you know, I've got like an Airbnb tour. I've got the uh, starting an Airbnb. Are we crazy? Sort of video. Uh, but I took in order to make that work. I took some of my retirement funds, so my IRAs and four hundred one ks, and I actually liquidated them. Paid the taxes on them and the penalties because the government's got to get their fair share. Sorry, the dog is barking in the background. I apologize for that. Pepper! I took money and I said, hey, you know what? I need to get a good investment that's going to give me a good return of income of money every month. And something that I don't really want to have to do a lot of work on. Now, obviously, Airbnb is a much more hands-on um, deal than just renting it out long term. Uh, but the returns are a lot greater or can be a lot greater. And uh, so I took and liquidated a bunch of retirement funds. And then I pulled out a loan on the house I'm in right now and had enough cash sitting there to go out and put 25% down on a really, really nice single family residence. And I can tell you that the return on that cash that I pulled out of this house, so I paid like 4% interest, not even 4% interest on the, on the loan I took out. Um, I already paid the taxes on the IRAs and the, and the 401ks, so that was just cash. 
but um, the return on my cash right now is somewhere in the neighborhood of 25% uh, for this first year. And that's on top of the fact that I, I, I had spent a lot of that cash getting furniture and things like that. That 25% is money in my pocket, guys. That's 25%. And 25% of the 25% down that I put is a lot of money. Now, granted, we're going into the slow season right now, but what was rule number one? Save. So what have I been doing with all the money I've been making on the Airbnb? I've been sticking it in the bank, man. I am building up that piggy bank. That thing is nice and fat right now. So you know what? I could lose my job and I'd be okay for several months because of the money that my money has made for me. So, number one rule, save your money. You never know when a rainy day is going to come. Number two, get that money working for you, man. You get that money working for you, and all of a sudden those rainy days aren't so rainy. I look at it and I'm like, hmm, okay, it's an extra week off. You know what? I've got other streams of income coming in. It's not a big deal. I'm not living on that stream of income that is coming in over at the Airbnb. I'm putting that in the bank. I'm not living on the stream of income I'm getting from my little side jobs, consulting, and things like that. That goes in the bank. So when I get paid by that stuff, okay, if I can't pay for it out of my main checking account, no big deal. I've got a separate checking account set up. I can just pull money out of there. We'll be good to go. I know it's not a topic about pipes. It's not a topic about tobacco. But it's an important topic nonetheless. Because look at me. I'm 43 years old. I've been working in a career for about 20 years. I got about 20 years to go, God willing. Unless he chooses to pick me off earlier. If he chooses to pick me off earlier, so be it. I know where I'm going. So, I don't want to do this job for another 20 years that I'm doing now. And I'm working hard now so that I have other sources of income. Right now they supplement, but eventually I hope they will replace my income that I generate from a nine to five job, which actually technically is like 6.30 to 5.30, but whatever. <laughs> That's construction for you. So that's really all I wanted to share with you guys is that, you know what? I'm getting furloughed. I'm only getting furloughed for a week. So again, not that bad. I really look at it as just kind of an unpaid vacation. I'm cool with it. But I'm in a position where it's not really going to be that big of a deal. Not that big of an effect on my life and my finances. But I know there's a lot of you out there that it could be a big impact on you. And so I'm encouraging you to do what you can to cut your expenses now. Start saving money. And a great way to do that is get rid of car payments, get rid of credit card payments, stop using credit cards, go to a cash basis, go to an um, yeah, envelope system or something of that nature. You can do it. You can get out of debt and you can start saving money. And then you can start having that money making money for you. So that when you do run into that rainy day, and it will come, it will, trust me, you'll be prepared. Appreciate y'all watching, and uh, happy smokes, folks. <laughs>